Hi, Buckaroos. Um, I ha hello, it's Bert. Um, this is pastory time. Um, you might be able to hear the fan on. I don't think you will, but if you do, and there's like a sort of gentle humming, it's it's really hot, and um, I just had a bath, and I don't want to sweat too much whilst doing this. So I've got some ice lemon water and the fan on. I haven't done a, any filming for a while and I, in the meantime I've gone into a real sci-fi rabbit hole um, where oh, I, uh, even though it's kind of like we decided we would do this um, kind of horror slasher reading summer and um, the spooky smart bitch uh, read along um, for which I have created a TBR and not quite got to it yet um, I've kind of just been into science fiction um, and I generally tend to read old science fiction um, although I'm well up for you know some recommendations if there's some good contemporary uh, sci-fi that I am not aware of or that, that you have re read and, and, and have liked please let me know but I thought I'd do a haul because um, quite recently we managed to go into town which is a very rare occurrence these days, and the um, Troutmark, the second-hand bookshop in the Cardiff Arcades, has, I think, kind of fairly recently reopened, um, social distancing and all the, the rest of the, the stuff. And um, I went in there and I bought a, a stack of books, and I've also been ordering from various places online some second-hand uh, science fiction, which I've, I've read good things about. So... Let me show you what I've got. Um, uh, let's begin with um, Vonda N. McIntyre, who I've been hearing really good things about. Now, this is called The Exile Waiting. Um, and yeah, I, so I've heard, um, I've read different reviews of various books by Vonda N. McIntyre. This is a mid 70s um a dystopian uh, she even quotes um ursula uh, Le Guin in the inside there it's also dedicated to ursula and charles 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 with <laughs> with fond memories of their charitable home for writers um yeah the the font is quite small um maybe people had better eyesight in 1978 but um this is, uh, yeah, about a storm-torn earth, um, which is kind of, it looks like it's gone back into kind of Renaissance uh, time kind of kind of garb and uh, systems. Um, the, ru ru the ruler is a Medici figure gone to seed. Um, the heroine of the novel is a remarkably believable girl, as it says the Daily Telegraph. Um, she's a telepath and a cat burglar. So that sounds really good. Um, I'm really excited to read that one. Um, this is another one I picked up, which I know nothing about. It's called Exiles to Glory, and that's by J.E. Pornell, who is not an author I've ever heard of. This is one I picked up in the bookshop. Um, and this is kind of about, you know, like a, a distant future Earth where there's like youth gangs um, called Juvies. Um, and... Yes, I think um, some guy accidentally kills, he is attacked by them and accidentally kills one of them and then is like on the run. Uh, it, the cover looks kind of spacey though, so hopefully, you know, there's some kind of space satellite uh, thing going on as well with that one. I've always wanted to read Anne McCaffrey. And I know people are really into sort of um, dragons and stuff like that, but I, I've, I've never really been drawn to dragons. Um, so I was looking for a standalone sci-fi uh, rather than fantasy by uh, Anne McCaffrey. And I found this one in the bookshop. This is called Decision at Duna. Although when I bought it, I thought it was called Decision at Doom because the writing looks a bit weird like that. Um, and it's about a planet because, like, obviously... You know, Earth in the future is always overpopulated um, and like everything's always going downhill. Um, so there we're looking in the future for a new planet to colonize. Um, also, there's this other race called the 
Hruban who are looking for a planet to colonize and we've both at the same time found this planet and we both want to colonize it and we both sort of go there and um, they both start to think of this planet Duna as home but uh, it says the one-legged smooth skin no we've got two legs the, uh, the smooth skin two-legged mammal known as man came face to face with the furry four-pawed mammal known as Thruban. Um, this is going to be really good, I think. I've got a good, a good feeling about that one. Now, this one is written by what sounds like a French man, um, Louis Chabonneau. It's a really good cover, yeah? And that's called Corpus Earthling. He was marked for extermination by the invaders from Mars. Um, this is a, a very early 60s one, I think. It might be 1960. You can tell the artwork's slightly earlier, can't you? It's 1960. Sorry about the van noises. Um, and this is about a guy that starts hearing voices in his head. And it turns out he's hearing this conversation from Martians that are about to take over the planet Earth. And they're sort of discussing how they're going to do that. And he's hearing it all and he's like, oh, am I going crazy? And then... Um, they realise that there's an earthling that, is li that they can hear what they're saying and they have to track him down to kill him. And I guess he has to warn the planet that there's going to be an invasion. Um, it looks really good. Now, like earlier in the day when, when we went book shopping, I... Excuse us. Earlier that day... I was saying to Sean, you know, I'd really like to try some Octavia Butler again. Because I started Kindred and I got like about a third of the way in and I just wasn't really feeling it. Uh, I think the historical element of it, I don't really read a lot of historical fiction at all. I can't think of any that I read. And yeah, I was just kind of, I sort of, I was kind of semi enjoying it, but you know, I put it down and I never picked it up again. And then the more I hear about how amazing Octavia Butler is, I keep thinking, well, I need to try again. So I was just looking around in the, on the off chance that there would be some Octavia Butler. And um, because I know that she writes series, I didn't know like if there'd be like edit books, standalone ones, or if there'd be in the series. So I found one and I took a punt on it and it's um, Clay's Ark. And then, um, look at that cover. And then when I got home, I had a look and it is part of a series, but it's kind of a prequel. So in a, in a way, I don't really mind starting with this one, even though it was written later on in the series. Um, I don't know. Let me know if you've read Clay's Ark or if you've read books in this particular series. I'm not sure what, what they're called. Is this a good place to start or do I need to, like, is it better if I read the first book? Is it the um, Transformers or something like that? To, to, not Transformers. Um, Transformers. Very excited about this next one, and I've got two books by this author because I was so excited about this one. I just picked up any uh, another one that I saw by him. So Jack L. Chalker, oh my gosh, the Web of the Chosen. Can you see this? They're kind of like. Um, almost like dragons with cat faces and little moustaches. Um, it's about a guy called Bar Holiday, who's a, uh, he works to find new terraformable planets to colonise, I guess. Which is like, you know, these days he'd be the enemy, wouldn't he, really? It's just like going around colonising stuff, left, right and centre in the future. Like, we've learnt nothing. Um, anyway, hopefully some bad stuff happens to him. He um, finds some planet. And, and uh, actually, he finds an abandoned generation ship. And there's nothing I love more than generational ships where right? like, people are sleeping for like hundreds of years or like just having kids. And then their kids are having kids and then they'll finally land on the planet. I love that. Anyway, he took the. Uh, he took a, Something went wrong on the planet Patmos. It looked safe. But maybe he's met his match, possibly in these um, cute little dragon cat animals. So another one by him I found is A Jungle of Stars. With, you know, 
an awesome cover as well. And this is, I was really taken by this one because the character in this one, it says, died for the first time on July 29, 1969 in Vietnam. And then his troubles really began. So he's kind of has a, like a, is reawakened or has like a second life is, you know, like, and he's in, involved in this intergalactic war between these two sides. And it seems like he has to pick which side to go on, which seems pretty clear, I think, because I think what it says one side is um, like evil and one side is good. That seems pretty easy, um, but I'll read it and let you know. This cover is really cool as well, isn't it? Um, oh, this one looks unread, and it's like there's no. It's like like I bought it new in 1968. Um, this is the Doomsday Planet by Hal Vincent. Again, not an author I've heard of. This sounds really, really good. It says, on the edge of space, the planet Ormin spun like a vast spider web, dooming all who came within its reach to a living death. So they, they're in space um, and they find this planet, which is kind of um, emitting some kind of weird energy, which seems to affect people in its vicinity. Um, so they're, they're being pulled towards it. Um, and I guess the people on the planet, you know, are waiting for the, the arrival of uh, this spaceship and they're going to do stuff to them. Um, that sounds really good. And it's also really short. It's like 140 pages. Living Death. I'm very happy with this one. Um, so the last secondhand paperback that I found was... Um, this book called Sleeping Planet by William R. Burkett. This is pretty much a cover by, um, although it does sound really good, but I just love that sort of, you know, late 60s psychedelic sci-fi illustration. Um, this is f originally from 1965, but this edition is 1968. Um, this was his debut novel as well, by the looks of things. Um, and, you know, people have said it's thoroughly enjoyable. It's it, The tagline is, you may not be sleepy now, but give yourself time, which is something I've really been able to relate to during lockdown. Um, because if I'm not sleepy now, I will be really soon. They've made this, some kind of evil alien has made everyone on the earth, I think, go to sleep. Um, except for the ten people. 10 exceptions. I like it when, you know, like some, sometimes, you know, there might be, there might, maybe they were like in a coma in a hospital and then they wake up and everyone's asleep or like they've been underground. Or, I'm hoping it's something like that. Um, and it says, will they be able to save the galaxy? So it's 10 people trying to save the galaxy. This looks really good, doesn't it? Sleeping planet. Right. I've saved the best cover um, for the, the reveal of this hardback, which I ordered on eight books because... <laughs> Because I saw the cover um, online, I was like, right, let's hope this book sounds good because I need to buy it because of the cover. And it does actually sound great. So I've often wanted to read um, things by Jeffrey Household. He's known for a book called uh, Rogue Mail, which is kind of like a very sort of famous popular thriller. Um, I think, is it from the like, I could be wrong, is it from the 60s? Um, but this is a book called The Sending. From 1980. I'm just really hoping you can see this cover. Let's try it at different angles, just in case. Because it's some kind of like skunk type animal inside this kind of. It sort of like looks like he's thinning um, inside his head. And it sounds really good because it's like. So it's set in, in um, Somerset. And it just seems to be lots of stuff about sort of witchcraft and um, pagan sacrifices. And um, there's uh, some guy goes back home to a haunted kind of manor or something. And uh, his sanity is threatened by a continuous terror resembling the sixth sense of an animal. Um, 
I don't know what any of this means, but it sounds really good. Um, and it's just like, yeah, come on. This one I feel is more on the horror end of things. So I might slide into horror um, with this one and then carry on with this one, which again, I think has elements of horror with it. And this is the last book that I'm going to show you. And this just looks amazing. Um, can you see that killer bowl? Um, by Gary K. Wolf, the explosive shock novel of tomorrow's killer sport. Now, you might not know this about me, but one of my all time favorite films is Rollerball, the 70s um, sort of dystopian you know, film. And um, this looks kind of similar to Rollerball in that it's about like a future where there's this really violent sport which kind of manipulates the population of that time. So it's set in the future. Um, it's a shattering foretaste of tomorrow's entertainment, definitely not for the squeamish. This book originally um, came out in 1975, which is just perfection, isn't it? And yeah, there's nothing I love more than um, futuristic sports. Um, so yeah, this and this are kind of my sort of gateway from science fiction into horror. Um, that's the plan. Um, I might go for this one next. There's actually also <laughs> um, a novel by the creator of Roger Rabbit. What do you think of that? That's my haul. I think when you're in the mood for something, you got to embrace it. And, you know, at least, you know, a couple of times every year, I just get heavily into sort of um, old sci-fi. Sci um, um, I hope you enjoyed seeing all the lovely covers and hearing about the books. Um, I hope you're all really, really well. Just have a chat with me in the comments if you feel like it. If not, that's all right. Bye, my friends.